if, if you want to have joy in your life, put joy in someone else's life. I remember this one acronym I had, um, I think it was in my mom's kitchen years ago, and it had joy, and it had J for Jesus, and it had the O for others, and it had Y for yourself. So if you're putting Jesus first, and then you're investing into others, you'll be taken care of. We had been here a couple of months, and I finally told Wendy, I said, I, I gotta get tapped in. I mean, I've always you know, been involved in some type of ministry in the, in the church, whether it be ushering or choir, or whatever the case may be. Me, I'm, I'm a big kid. I, I love kids, I love you know, interacting with them and seeing, you know, seeing their reactions and everything like that. So when I you know, had a chance and Miss Lisa's like, oh, um, you're a guy, and you want to work with younger kids. I didn't say, that's unusual. So, and uh, she goes, well, you passed the background test, so I guess we'll give you a try, and here it is 11 years later. And that's one thing I love about Oak Ridge is you're free to serve wherever you feel led to serve. You're not required to serve in the children's ministry just because you have a child. <laughs> so for me, where I'm an introvert and he's an extrovert, I chose the guest services and I greet each Sunday at the door. When you're there every Sunday and you're serving, people get to know you. And when you're not there, they're like, oh, is everything okay? You know, we missed you last week. So they do get used to seeing your face each and every week. And I know the kids miss him if he misses a week. So. And the parents will let me know too. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's easy to, you know, give your tithe sometimes each week, but it's really stepping out of your comfort zone sometimes to give above and beyond that. But I have to say that any time we've ever stepped out in faith, God has shown up, <laughs> definitely. What we experienced with both of us losing our jobs since we've been here, um, I lost my job in 2009. Two years later, he lost his job. And it was a wake-up call because we were so comfortable in, you know, our finances and in our life and everything. And to be honest, we weren't even really faithfully giving like we should. Um, definitely weren't giving above and beyond. Um, yeah, I remember you know, asking if we could, you know, get money just to pay one bill. And the amount that we needed, the person that I'd gone to, he had said, well, that's actually more than what we normally, you know, give. Um, but let me get back with you. And he called us later that day. And he said, somebody gave that amount. So we're going to give that to you. Later on, when things got better and and you know we were you know making you know not near near what we were making before, but doing doing well again, and um, had a special provision came through to us. That was one of the first things. It was like we wanted to give back to um, to that fund that you know was there for us when we needed it. Definitely when you go through something like that and you see how giving other people are to you in a hard situation like that, you want to give back. It was, um, it was a hard, it was a hard time, but it was a hard lesson that we needed at the time. And you just, you know, sometimes we start getting a little bit, you know, you say, oh, <laughs> maybe we could, you know, maybe we could do this. And also we said, you know, but look where we came from. It's like, uh, maybe we shouldn't do that because that would probably be starting to put us back into the same situation we were in before. It's like, we've learned that lesson. Let's, uh, let's not go back there. 